So I'm going to talk to you today about this lovely cushion. It comes as a kit and it's really easy to make. So I'm going to talk you through some of the simple instructions um, to, to, as I say, to make it. But first of all, let me show you what comes in the kit. So you're going to get the fabrics to form the front of the kit, which come as strips. So you've got sky, land and green grass. You're going to get the patterns, the applique patterns, for the butterflies. You're going to get fabric for the butterflies. You're going to get obviously instructions. You're going to get a bit of calico for the inside of the front of the cushion. And this is heat and bond. So this is your bonding medium for the fused applique that is the technique used here. And there's enough fabric for the back of the cushion. So What's the process? Well, step one is to sew, as I have here, all the fabrics into their requisite order. You can change them around a bit, but it is meant to have sky, land and green grass. You're then going to um, think about the quilting. Um, you've got two lots of quilting done by Nicola on this. We've got straight stitching to hold it onto the um, onto the background wadding, which is here. She's also done some free motion here, uh, but that means you've got to avoid the applique bits. So I just thought I'd say to you, here's another thought for those of you who don't do free motion. And I know there are a lot of sewers of you out there. Free motion's a bit scary. So I give you a bit, a bit of a few options. Make your strips, as I've said, and lay them on the wadding. You can then stitch through here with your walking foot. Or this, and I think this is what I would opt for. You could do cross hatching, which is again straight sewing with your sewing foot before we do the applique work. You have to do it before the applique work because otherwise you've got to stop and start either side of the butterflies. So take your, your ruler and give yourself a 45 degree angle. If you haven't got a ruler, don't panic, just give yourself something. So I like to do it with um, my quilter's chalk. It's um, really quilter's version of uh, tailor's chalk. It's just softer. Anything you've got that will mark your fabric so you can see where you're going. And you can see I'm drawing parallel lines they happen to be two inches apart, so I'm putting the two inch line on the previous line and just coming across. And I'm just going to go all the way to one corner. And I'm going to turn this around and I am going to do the other way a little bit just so you can see. I do like to do it in chalk because it kind of gives me, it's very easy to get rid of if you've done, a, um, if you've done a, an error, a whoopsie but you can just, it will also, you can think about whether or not you like this design. Cross hatching is a very traditional background stitch um, on old fashioned quilts. And the reason it stood the test of time is that it's very pleasing to the eyes. There's a degree of symmetry to it. So if I just do these little ones here, you'll get the idea. So if I do if I do it two inches this way, you'll see a bit more of it. So again, in two inch segments. So having, if I was then deciding to do the stitching, you just uh, put your walking foot on the sewing machine, please. Increase the stitch length to be a quilting stitch, which means that that's going to move up from a piecing stitch, which is normally two and a half, you're going to move it up to at least three. Now, some of the more modern machines actually look nicer with your background fat, uh, thread as a, a bigger stitch. So maybe three and a half. Don't be afraid to do it. So you can see this is a really pretty cross hatch um, that would be stitched. You could use any colour thread you like. You're going to be moving from the blue to here to here. So probably tonal grey. I think would work for me. So having done all of that, you can then think about the applique. 
The applique is what we call fused applique. So you're going to be tracing onto your heat and bond and you're going to be using these bright fabrics. So having traced out the shapes, you then fuse them with the iron onto the top of your work, which is now pre-quilted. So all of this space has got these lovely cross hatchings in them now. We haven't given you in the kit, there is no stabilizer. But if you do them through the wadding, the wadding acts as your stabilizer. And on this one, Nicola has done a straight stitch, which again means she used the free motion technique. Again, that's a learned technique. So if you're not sure about that, you can revert to zigzag. And zigzag, if you squeeze it together, becomes satin stitch. These are very simple shapes. They would look absolutely delightful in satin stitch. You could use a yellow one for here, the blue ones for here. And with the wadding behind, that will act as your stabilizer. So you won't get any, any cockling. These are the antennae you can put in um, either with stitching or I'm going to be a bit of a rebel here. You could use a permanent pen. Do not use a biro though. There are special pens on the quilting market for quilts and you could color these in with a lovely black micron pen. So I hope you enjoy making this super easy cushion kit.